All right. Your next homework assignment is due on Sunday of next week. So you don't even get a week to solve that one. There's never any break in this class. We're always moving, moving, moving. And uh, if you didn't pick up the homework assignment, you can get that at the end of class. Here it is, homework seven. It's just uh, a few of the problems from the book. Today we're going to start talking in more depth about annual worth. This was introduced very briefly in chapter five, but chapter six is all about it. So that's what we're covering today and in class on, um, on Thursday as well. Oop, we already went through this. Okay, oop, here we go. So annual worth analysis is the process of moving values uh, from, does somebody else need the notes, class notes? Okay, so annual worth analysis, remember in the previous chapter what we did is we'd take either all of the amounts to the present or sometimes we'd take all of the amounts to the future. And there was different reasoning for doing that. Um, sometimes we would take all of the amounts to the future, remember if it was a multi-year project and we wanted to know maybe if it takes three or four years to build a building when the building is finally put into service, what's the cumulative cost up till that point? So that would be an argument in favor of why you do a future worth analysis. Well, sometimes we want to do annual worth analysis. And in just a moment, we'll talk about the instances where that's useful. But here's a visualization of what we're going to do. You can see in this cash flow diagram, there are some costs in the present. There's another cost in year one. And then every year, there's an ongoing uh, operations and maintenance expense. And then in the final year, in year eight, there's this one revenue, which it looks like it's probably a salvage value, where whatever the equipment was that was purchased in year zero is sold for scrap. In annual worth analysis, what we're doing is we're converting all of those amounts into an annual payment something that lasts over the duration of the cash flow diagram. So that's the basic operation and we'll take a look at this very cash flow diagram in today's in-class exercise. What we do is put the uh, annual worth into one cycle. And so we won't need to use the repeatability assumption here. We're going to just um, calculate the annual worth in every year and one of the assumptions that we have to keep, into, uh, keep in mind is that if we did want to repeat it over and over again, then once you take it to the annual worth basis, then you would assume that in additional cycles that all of the annual worths are the same. And so it kind of makes it convenient if you're comparing something that is uh, two years and something that is three years. Let me just draw that on the board. Let's say that we wanted to compare something that lasts one, two, three, all right, one. We had a big expense and then a cost and then a salvage value. So this is our three year and our two year would look a little bit different. So we have a cost an expense and a revenue. Okay, so if we wanted to compare these two alternatives in the annual worth basis, what it's saying is you actually find the annual amount before you start repeating it. So we can convert this into whatever the equivalent uh, cost over time is. So here's one, two, and three. So we'd convert it, and we'd convert the same thing here into its two-year repeating cost. And then once they're converted, then we can cycle this two more times, and cycle this three times. So we can find the least common multiple. And um, so 
it's a little bit backwards from when we were using LCM with the uh, present worth or the annual worth basis because we do the cycling after the cash flow conversion. Um, what we'll usually see when we're doing annual worth is the initial investment, which is a present value. So that's the cost of the asset to begin with. It's negative on a cash flow diagram because we're spending money to get it. The salvage value is going to be when you sell the item at the end and it usually has a much lower life because of the use of the asset. And then there's already some expenses on an annual basis that we add to the annual amounts that come from the initial purchase price. We're going to add that to the uh, existing annual amount. So when we make the translation, we are going to take this and turn it into a little bit more here. And so then we erase it like that. And then we'll take the salvage value and we'll turn it into a little bit here. But you'll notice we don't have anything in year zero. And that's the, that's the typical form of an annual series is that the annual amounts are only 1 through n. The annual amounts don't exist in year zero. So if you have a present value, then you'll use the a slash p to turn it into an annual series. If you have a future amount at the end of the life cycle, then you'll do an a slash f operation to get that into an annual amount. All right. Capital recovery is a phrase that was, um, that was mentioned in a previous class. And if you want to find out how much you have to recover on an ongoing basis just to cover the initial cost of the item um, and the salvage value, capital recovery is how much you'd have to charge every year to pay it off. And so let me draw a cash flow diagram here on the board that shows what capital recovery is trying to find out. So let's say that you purchase a truck <coughs> and you're going to keep the truck for five years. So you purchase the truck in year zero. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, at the end of the five years you sell the truck. So here's your purchase price and then here's the salvage value at the end of the year. Capital recovery says, how much are you going to have to earn each year to pay off the initial purchase amount? So capital recovery is basically saying, what is the A, what is the amount A that will balance out that present value and the future value of the salvage? We'll get into capital recovery when we meet next time. Yes. If you're solving for the annual, then you'll finally actually use either the PMT function. Um, we, we took a, a brief look at the PMT function in Excel. But yeah, today we're going to do it on the tables. You can solve for our bulk annual amounts in Excel as well, just like we have previously. Now, does everybody have um, in-class exercise 16 with them? Everybody get a copy of that? No? Let's see. Okay, in-class exercise 16 shows the first cash flow diagram that we saw. And we're going to want to find what is the annual worth of this cash flow diagram. These are amounts in millions. So you purchase an item for eight million in year zero. It's a transmitter, like a television transmitter. There has to be some refurbishing work done in year one for five million. And then every year, there's operation and maintenance expenses of 0.9 million. You sell the item in year eight. So there are so many different ways to solve this problem. You know, every student solution could look a little bit different, and you could still get the right answer here. So at the end, when I show you the solution that I did, yours doesn't have to follow the same steps to get it right. And let me give you an idea of what I mean. For example, you could take the 5 to the 8, add them together, and then spread the combined amount over the 8 years. 
Or you could take the 8, spread it over the 8 years, then move the 5 to 0, take it from 0 to spreading it out over the years. The, you know, the order that you do things in could be very different. You could still get the right answer. So work with a partner on this and see if you can find out what's the annual worth of the cash flow diagram. And I'll be circulating around with the answer as you do that. People are starting to get the answer here, so let's take a quick look at the solution. So we're trying to translate into an annual series, and I guess you could say that there's four components to getting this new amount in the, on the annual basis. We have to take the present value to an annual series. This is a future amount that we have to take to year zero and then spread it out over the annual series. Here's another future amount at the end of the annual series, which is kind of nice for us because we can do it that directly. It doesn't have to be a two-step operation necessarily. And then there's the amounts that are already in an annual series that have to be combined. So like for part A where it's saying outline the strategy, all I did for that was I just sort of said uh, what factors I was going to be looking up and what amount that would be uh, multiplied by. So I probably, if I, if I was going to do it again, I would combine the 8 million and the 5 million that was shifted over to year zero before I did this operation. But like I said earlier, there's more than one way to solve this one. So what you can see here is that I'm using the amount from above once I take it to year zero. As I was walking around, I noticed some of you didn't do an A slash F. And that's okay, you don't have to. You can take the future amount to your zero and then take it from zero over the annual series. So in the end, it should be negative 3.05 million is the, uh, is the amount each year. The homework that you've just got, does everybody, uh, if you don't have the homework, be sure and grab that before you leave, but um, none of the, I don't think any of the homework problems starts with a cash flow diagram. It actually is usually a, a word statement where it's describing the business somehow. And it's always a really good habit. Take the paragraph and turn it into a cash flow diagram. It's an extra step. You know, you're going to use a little extra pencil, but you can afford it. It's worthwhile. It's worth your time to make that cash flow diagram because once you make the cash flow diagram, it's easier to visualize what steps you have to do. So I'll just give you that suggestion. Um, that's all I have for you today. Let's take a look at these announcements before we finish for the day. The only thing on our horizon is uh, homework seven is due on Sunday. No, you know, it's going to be due Sunday. I can either be the kind of professor who improvises or the kind who plans. And every assignment, every lecture for the whole semester is fixed. It's a busy time. That's why it's an easy assignment. Yeah. I knew you'd be busy, so I gave you an easy assignment. And a fun one, too. So it'll sort of be, you can use this, this assignment as a rest from your studies. This can be your enjoyment. All right. Have a good day. I'll see you on Thursday.